In most of our SwiftUI apps, we have many SwiftUI views. Let's just focus on one for now. Something needs to provide the information that the SwiftUI view presents. Let's use an observable object. In order for the observable object to let the SwiftUI view know that it's been updated, it needs to have at least one property that's at published. This mechanism is part of the combined framework. Sadly, I have some news for you. Combine is going away. As they say in Casablanca, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. At the time of this recording, there's a pitch in the Swift forums that will soon become an evolution proposal. At published and observable objects will be replaced by something pretty clever. As I said, this is just a pitch for now, but because of the author of the proposal and the response it's getting, I think it's pretty clear that this will be the future direction. Even before this proposal has been accepted, there are many things we can do to reduce the use of combined and published to communicate between observable objects and our SwiftUI views. That's the topic of this video. We'll still use combined and at published inside of the observable object. We just won't use it between the observable object and the SwiftUI view. Next time, we'll go further and eliminate combined and at published completely. So let's get started and set up a simple app where we use combine and at publish to communicate between our observable object and SwiftUI. We'll start with a simple SwiftUI view called the main view. As usual, I move the view definition to an extension. We'll need some sort of body and it will have a V stack and on top we'll have an image that displays a number inside of a circle. And on the bottom, we'll have a next button that when we tap it, it will change the number that's displayed in the circle. Currently, the number and the circle are hard coded. As a first step, let's add this helper method that takes an int and returns the image we'll display. And now we replace the image with a call to this method. Now that we've got our UI stubbed out, we want to allow for the number to change. We need some sort of data source, and this is where our observable object comes into play. Now, you might call it a controller, or a presenter, or a view model. I don't really care what we call it, so I'm just going to call it support. Support will have a property named counter that contains the number we're going to display, and it has a single method named next, which will be the action that we call when we tap the button. The next method picks a random int between 1 and 50 and assigns it to the counter. So once the value of counter has been changed, how do we communicate that change back to our main view? One of the most common patterns in SwiftUI is to use the at published property wrapper to create a publisher of ints. We could subscribe to a publisher by itself, but it becomes easier if we also make support an observable object. And we often import foundation because that facility is included there. But honestly, we're really using combine. So we should import combine instead. All right, let's go back to the main view and connect it to support just for completeness. We need to connect to counter to get the int we'll be displaying. And we need to connect the buttons action. So we create an instance of support and declare it to be a state object so that we get the update notifications. And now the button action is a call to supports next method. And the data source for the image is supports counter property. Because support is a state object, every time we get told that something in support will change, we know to refresh it and get our updated counter. So now it's time for us to get rid of that communication between support and main view using combine. As I mentioned, we won't be eliminating combined and at published until the next video. So here's the current state of support. The spaces let you know that something's coming. As a first step, I'm going to declare counter to be private. That means that main view can't see it anymore, and that's going to mean that our code no longer compiles. I'm also going to remove the conformance to observable object. Again, in main view, this is going to mean that support can no longer be an at state object. It also means the mechanism by which main view gets its updates has been broken. So we need to introduce something new. Let's create a new property named numbers. And initially, numbers will just be counter. 
as you know from your experience with Swift, this won't compile because numbers is part of support and support doesn't exist at this point. So numbers must be lazy. A lazy property must be a var. And my practice is to make all vars privately settable, at least initially. I don't want someone outside changing the value of numbers without me knowing. At this point, numbers is an int. So we don't want to use counter. We want to use dollar sign counter, which is a publisher of ints that never fails. And now here comes the magic. If we don't want to communicate between support and the main view using combine, numbers can't be a publisher. And so we transform it to an async sequence of ints that never fails using the values operator. Counter is still at publish because we need this publisher internally. We're just not using at published and combined between support and the main view. Going back to main view, I mentioned that support could no longer be an at state object because support is no longer an observable object. So eliminate the at state object property wrapper and just treat support as an ordinary object. I'm going to need something that changes so that I can refresh my view. So let's introduce current value, which is an int, which will mark as at state. This will allow us to fix the other thing that's currently broken in our code. Counter is private, so we can't use support.counter, but we can use main view's current value instead. This now compiles and builds and even runs. And the next button still works. We're just not getting the updates back from support to our main view. So how do we do that? Main view needs to get the next element of the async sequence numbers when it's available. And support is doing all that it needs to do. Our fix has to be inside of main view itself. We know how to get elements from a sequence. We just use a for loop. So in main view, let's add a listen for numbers method. And inside of it, let's just iterate through all of the numbers in support.numbers. This doesn't compile because numbers is not a sequence. Numbers is an async sequence. And the fix is wonderful and so clever, we just have to use the await keyword because it may be a while until we get our next number in the sequence. If we use await, there's a possible suspension point, so either our for loop has to be wrapped inside of a task or listen for numbers must be marked as async. And now we can implement our for loop to say whenever a number does appear, we'll assign it to current value, and then it will just show up in our UI. We're almost there. We need to call listen for numbers. We need to start this for loop that listens forever. We could do it in on appear, but listen for numbers is async, so we need to use await with it. And we could wrap this inside of a task, but instead we can use the task modifier and call this asynchronous method inside. And that's it. We're still using at published and combine, but only within support. Next time, we'll remove at published. The time after that, we'll get to what you really want to see.